what is ethical profitability? Paul Dr. Nacho here with Sheena Hinson, founder of Up Level Practice Solutions. And she is an amazing Nacho fan, super fun person. I think you can match my energy too, Sheena. We can go energy for energy, uh, like friendly tornadoes out there in a the dental space, helping dentisting humans increase success, decrease stress, and most of all, reduce the number of times you feel like crying inside a day. I have the cry inside monster. This is where dentists and teams have to keep their crying. And you know, you know, Sheena, because you were a hygienist and you were dental in a dental office. What are some things that made you cry inside as a hygienist? Oh, poor communication yeah. and, and never the assumption of goodwill. And a lot of times that's for good reason, which is why I always talk about ethical profitability, because you can do it. You can do it the right way. So you have hung up your scale or what was your favorite instrument? The 13, 14, the sickle? Mont Montana Jack, of course. Montana Jack, right? Every hygienist says a Montana Jack. Um, and you've hung up the scaler. And now tell us what you're doing. You've dedicated your life to helping dentists with operations, ethical profitability. Tell us a little bit about that. That's right. I help the dentist figure out exactly where they are so that we can then gauge that to their five-year plan and lay out the steps, help them figure out like, okay, how do I get from A to B? And what does that translate to chair side? Because so many times frustrations that I felt as a hygienist was, oh, we need to do this better. How can we improve that? But you need to, to be armed. You need the tools to be able right. to carry that out. You need to know how to say it. What does that translate to from here all the way down to in that operatory with the patient? Yeah, for sure. And they don't teach us these things in dental school. Tell me a little bit about this. What stage in a dental practice life cycle are most of your clients coming to you? Are they new? Are they medium? You know, I found that I, we just did a, a Facebook Live the other day with a dental practice owner who was making plenty of money, but had plenty of stress. And I said, why did she want to return her practice? And my community said, Sheena, because she wasn't making money. And it wasn't that. It was because managing her team, the stress, she did not want to do it. She found a coach to transform her true hero's journey. Now she likes being a practice owner. But tell us, where do most of your clients, when do they come to you in their life cycle of their practice? Most of them have been practicing for a number of years, if not towards the end of their career where they may want to transition out. And I think a lot of that is because with, you know, with wisdom, we realize, oh, wait, maybe I do want to work on my business instead yeah. of just in my business because there's never enough time. And, and what that typically boils down to, in my opinion, is we have managing and we have leading. Right. And they're totally different. They, you know, a lot of times we use that same terminology, but to manage is just to kind of like make sure all the boxes are checked, but to lead, that's how you kind of go to the next level. That's how we can, you know, delegate and elevate. And, and yeah, that's I like where that. I think a lot of dentists really struggle and that really causes extra stress. Yeah, for sure. Nacho team and job can you get a, a screenshot of us. I love that delegate and elevate with Sheena Henson. Let's put that on Instagram. So good. One of the things I was sharing the other day, Sheena, because right now, I own four businesses. I own two dental practices, Dental Nachos and Dentist Job Connect. And I want to share why it's so difficult to be a dentist and a team member. It's because you're doing the work on the patients, producing the work all day long. And there aren't many hours to stop and make systems, to stop and have meetings. What are some ways when you, when you meet these practices that are in pain, what are some of the steps you say, get them to where they want to be in five years? Give us a little preview of what that, that looks like. The first question that we have to ask is what is an investment and what is an expense? Right. Time training your team, equipping them to be successful is always, always, always an investment. You know, we hear, well, we can't afford to not block off production. We can't afford to send our team here, but you can't afford not to. And right. it's only going to get worse. You know, most of the frustrations could be avoided you know, we're like, oh, my team, they don't do this. They don't understand what it takes to run a business. And, you know, a lot of times that goes the other way. But are we really training them to a high level to, you know, what excellence looks right. like? Do they have clarity around that? I had a great, I love that. And, you know, these dentists, they become narrow minded in how to spend money because I've seen them spend more on a vacation than a coach. And it is not about a Ford. It is about what matters to you. And at some point, the pain gets high enough where you say, I can't keep doing it this way. 
The one thing I want to ask you next, though, is I, I am a coach. I am a consultant. I don't do as much team training as I used to, but people would hire me, Gina, to come and talk about case acceptance, how to talk to patients, what words to use. So the practice owner would be like, hey, we hired this guy, Paul Goodman. He's going to come in. And I sit there. And when they look at me, not everyone's going, oh, I can't wait for this coach to be here. They go, who is this guy to tell me what this? Like someone come to your house, say, I'm here to help you be happier. Here, start doing your dishes differently. So how would you prepare a team and dental office to get ready to work with a coach? What are some best practices? I think just being honest with your team and let them know like, hey, I want us to grow. I want it to be more rewarding for us, for the team, for the, the practice as a whole, but then also so that we can provide a higher standard of care for the patients. And I think that so many times, especially my fellow hygienists, I used to, you know, have the same, you know, frustrations like, well, I'm a healthcare provider. Why do I need to worry about acceptance? And why do I need to track numbers? But those numbers, that's how we can ensure that we're right. really providing the standard. And the numbers just happen to be the constant that allow us to do that. You know, it's fast I think, over feelings. You know, I call all of us out on our craziness, me included, because people will literally have my fitness pal on their phone and they'll put had two avocados and go, do you track your KPIs? You go, ah, I just go to work. And just, I go, but you're tracking your calories every day. So tell us about why it's important to be authentic, genuine, look at the numbers and set goals with numbers. Because of that clarity, you know, any, I would probably put a wager on like the discomfort level for doctors and team members when they do those yearly reviews, right? Yeah. So whenever that happens, when we have all that clarity and everybody's on the same page, those are much more productive. We can actually, it's it's more of a coaching relationship. And I'm, you know, kind of go against the grain. I think that the yearly review that talks about wages and increases, I think that should be a separate conversation right. than how can you grow with the practice? And, and I think when you're authentic in that and everybody's rowing in the same direction, it makes, it lessens the frustration. I love that. I, I was just asked to do a, an interesting lecture on leadership that was just not only to dentists. So they asked me how I could make it applicable to everyone. And one of my learning objectives is how can you invest in the people that work for you that help them grow as not only a professional, but also a person. And it's just key, right? Whatever organization you're in, investing in your people as people, as redundant as that sounds. When I hired a coach in 2010, when my dad said, ah, we don't need a coach. They don't work. Everybody quits. I said, no, dad, we need to do this for our yes. team. I got poignant letters at the end that said, hey, Paul, I'm really glad you had Carol Kivler come in. Not only do I think I can be a better hygienist, but this helped me with my relationship with my sister. This helped me realize that maybe I was part of the problem in my family. And I mean, those things, they give me chills saying it because you give your team this resource that they wouldn't be able to get without you. And I'm proud of it. And practice owners should be proud of it. I mean, I think, you know, would you agree that when a coach comes in, the team should be, they might be. Uh, anxious a bit, but also think it's awesome their practice is investing in them. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. And and I think that comes from leadership being bought in because I have seen practices. Thankfully, I've not experienced a lot, but the practice owner will pour money into, you know, training and coaching for the team, but then they're not really living it. Right. Like kind of, all right, you do you, but I'm going to continue to do it my way. And I think that that is key for success, you know, that it goes top down because it's got to be consistent. We're, we're, we we just implemented in our house uh, a no dessert during the weekday rule. And I got to be consistent, you know, because I had an eight year old, a four year old, yes. two willy nilly with dessert at any time. And I, my Mary did remind me, like, as a kid, I didn't eat dessert at every meal and it's probably not healthy. So we kind of have put a boundaries. And my wife actually said weekends to our daughters is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But Monday through Thursday, we're not going to have dessert and we got to be consistent, you know, being consistent as a parent and practice earners key. Tell me this, Gina. So we I do a lot of these interviews. And I talk to awesome people like you. And I'm sure people get inspired, but they're confused. Like, what's it look like to work with you? So walk us through someone reaches out to you, you know, up level and says, I want to work with Sheena. Do they start with a Zoom call, a consult? Do you come in person? Walk us through that. So typically the first step is a conversation. If it's convenient, if we're together in person, um, if not over Zoom, and we figure out like what is really throwing chaos in your day? 
because I could give you a playbook and say, this is exactly how you need to do it to be successful. But we know that that's not right for every practice. Right. So it would start with a conversation. And then I would help you figure out the goals. I would, you know, not overwhelm you. You know, you want to kind of pick the top priorities and then we yeah. go step by step and I make it as easy as possible. Yeah, I think what I'll, you can use this if you want, because I say this, uh, my job is help you treatment plan more happiness and less annoyance because Dennis and teams, Right now in my office, they're showing someone a treatment plan for an implant, scaling and root planing, a filling. So they say, we're going to make a treatment plan to make you happier and less annoyed here working. And that's what matters to you. And I think it's it's what I found when I do big cases for patient, Sheen, and you probably saw this as a, as a hygienist, the patient goes, I wish I did this sooner. I wish I valued myself sooner. And I see the exact same thing with coaching. Dr. Lincoln Harris was here, Ripe Global, awesome sponsor and partner, 80,000 member Facebook group. I asked him at the end of our conversation, Sheena, what, do you, what would you tell Dennis to do sooner? He said, get coaching. You don't have to do this on your own for too many years. You know, some of it, you know, the, the toughest part, Sheena, you know, when sometimes people say it's not about the money, but it really is about the money. With Dennis, it's not true all the time. Sometimes it's about them not wanting to give up control. Sometimes it's them not wanting to say they need help. Talk to that dentist, the dentist who's successful, but stressing everybody out, right? They're bringing in $3 million a year. Their EBITDA is infinity. <laughs> they're on the top docks of earth, but their team's going, hey, practice owner, you're awesome, but you're driving everybody nuts. Talk to them for a minute. Yes. So the big thing is you can have visibility in your business without full transparency. Just because you start setting goals and numbers, you are not showing bank deposit slips. So you're just tracking KPIs. I think that that's a big hesitation for many dentists because they're like, what do I show? What don't I show? But it's visibility, not transparency. So don't let that hold you back. And I would say the first thing to do if you're like hesitant, see where you are. Get, yeah. you know, a snap. I, I do complimentary snapshots because I believe that practice owners need to know where they are, whether they're ready for coaching or not. Right. You can't just keep walking in the blind, whether you're having help from outside or you're trying to do it on your own. So that's, that's I love really that. where you need to start. I always say that just do these consults. You always learn something, whether it's a consult for insurance billing, whether it's a consult for team management, whether it's a consult with an accountant, you learn something. As we wrap up in a few minutes, you know, I want you to help us at Dennis Job Connect. So this is my favorite drink. Aha. I hope they sponsor us. So we're, I'm always working on this. This is the aha moment brought to you by Dennis Job Connect. If you know anyone at Aha, so I said, talk to us about the practices hiring their first associate. The practice owners like, hey, I'm doing $1.9 million a year. I'm making 800 grand a year, but I don't see my family. I'm working on stuff. I'm going to hire an associate to help me. And that sounds great. But there's two types of people in the office that have to accept this associate, the patients and the team. So tell us a few either Sheena tips or things to think about if someone is adding an associate to their practice for the first time. Equip your team with the right language. Yes. That can throw it. Number one, they need to be on board. And a lot of times it's not because they don't want to do extra work. They want to make sure that the quality is there. Yeah. So don't just, you know, assume goodwill that your, your team has your back. And then, you know, be honest with them. It doesn't have to be a big, scary thing. Get them engaged. Don't, don't be secretive about it. And I promise you, you'll be surprised what you could learn and, and I, leverage that as I that, that associate. One of the things I'll share, I absolutely love the language part. One of the things I share when, you know, when someone says, I don't want to see the new associate, I say, Millie, we have chosen Dr. Sheena to share in the joy of your mouth. Who am I to deprive everyone of working in your mouth? And here's what I want you to do. After seeing Dr. Sheena, call or text me personally and let me know how it went. And this is the closure because I would be glad, proud, excited to have Dr. Sheena do this in my mouth. The practice owner has got to say that. So don't throw your associate under the bus and make them do a second more root canal. Yep. Don't throw them under the bus and make them see the patient who asks 87 questions for a class one composite. So I love that language part. Really, you, you hit the nail on the head. And that's the thing. And the team members need to believe it. So if the team members have things that need to be done, let the, let the associate come in. Have a family day because right. that hygienist or that dental assistant or that, you know, business team member saying, well, he's my, the new, you know, Dr. Sheena is my dentist. Like I let her do work on me. That goes so far and yeah. so much further than anything that they could say. Like, well, I let them do my work. And, and then I'll, a lot I'll of times the patients. Uh, 
I love that. That's what it's such a good point. They should work on the team and the practice. And also the JBR thing, Sheena, which is just be real. They think of me as the JBN, just be nice, just real. Hey, team that's worked with a successful dentist for 25 years, they cut down to three days a week. Can you cut down to three days a week? Can you only work 70% of your hours? Because your practice owner who's tired, maybe they work three days a week. Do you want to go get a job in another office? Oh, you don't? Well, maybe embrace this associate because they're allowing you to keep the hours of the office stable. I tell my team to share with front desk team members, associates allow you to get in more emergencies, which they love because every front desk team member has somebody saying to them, how come I can't get it? We have someone right now, Sheena, who bought a practice last year, grew it to 1.6 million, and he's booked out till August and he's stressed. And his team stressed, so they need an associate. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. Yes, and another thing too, like with the associates, definitely do some sort of diagnostic calibration. That yeah. is key because you don't want one doctor like, oh yeah, that needs a crown. And then the other one coming, oh yeah. no, I think it's fine. We'll monitor it. That can really cause issues with your patients. And those are the kind of things that people talk about and you know don't always make the assumption of goodwill. So, yeah, so. And, and I'll say, you know, we have so many... I'm into my hair. I'm wearing a hat now, but I'm into my hair, but I'm pretty easygoing. So I do go to the associate barber because I'm easygoing. But many of us out there who want our patients to see associates, they wouldn't go to a different stylist to get a haircut. So that's real to our patients. So you have to be authentic about figuring out that realness. You can't just say, like, go see the new person. Good luck. That language part, I want to dig in more with you on that. Well, Sheena, uh, you're an awesome person in this dentisting world. Love seeing you at Women in DSO. If someone's watching this, how can they reach out to you to learn more about how you can help them increase success and decrease stress? They can email me at Sheena, S-H-E-E-N-A, at Uplevel Practice Solutions, with an S, dot com, or they can call or text 803 803- Two eight seven two eight two three. Awesome, we'll put that in the comments here. You are awesome. Thanks so much for sharing with us. Anyone watching in, if we can help you hire your first or fifth associate, please reach yes. out to us at dentistjobconnect.com. We are doing the work of the Lord G.V. Black, famous dentist, bonding dentists together at Dentist Job Connect. Thanks so much, Sheena. I love it. Thank you, Paul.